So somehow I was convinced by my family that we need to have chickens at our house. So it is now time to build a chicken coop. So here we are. Uh, this is the spot we've chosen back here. And uh, let me start by saying I've never done this before. I have barely a clue what I'm doing, but I've been doing research for about the last month on the internets. Uh, so I feel like I have a pretty good grasp of um, how not to mess this up too badly. So hopefully this video will help you guys. I'm sure I'm going to make mistakes along the way, and I'll be honest with you about those mistakes, and hopefully uh, you can learn from my mistakes. But hopefully I'll do some things right too. So here's our patch of land uh, where our chicken coop is going to be. Um, I chose this patch of land for a few reasons. Um, so we're on a hill here, and the hill is downward sloping here. We have a, this is our drainage ditch right here, which takes it off to the side of our property. Um, and there's still a gentle slope right here. So this is pretty dry right now, and uh, we're pretty much at the wettest part of the year in Vermont. We're in uh, mid-April, which is about as wet as it gets. And this part is dry right here, so I think because of this gentle slope, it should stay dry all year. Um, we also chose it because it's pretty far away from the house, um, so that we won't have any smell or sound from the, the chickens doing their thing over here. So um, we're going with a 8 by 12 run uh, pen area for no real reason, but uh, that's what we're doing. So I started digging the first hole right here. And uh, eight feet away is another rock coming right here. And then I got another rock over here. And then there's a beer marking that corner. Um, so we're gonna dig, to start, we're gonna dig four post holes. Um, and then we are going to, uh, we're gonna cut down some small trees, some small dead trees I have up in the, the woods up here to, to serve as our corner posts. So let's get digging. All right, we have six holes dug for six posts. Um, so now, originally my idea was to pour concrete in here and set the post in it, um, plumb them up, and use those as my posts. But I'm trying to not spend money on this as much as possible, so uh, I decided I'm just going to use uh, wood from the land, and I'm just going to set it straight into the dirt and uh, just fill it back in with dirt. And yes, it's going to rot faster, but you know, you know, in five or six years, we could want to expand this thing, or maybe we'll want to move it. So I'm okay with just putting uh, wood straight into this. So now comes the fun part. We get to go out and pick some trees. Right then, this one looks good. I don't know. I don't know why I just said that with a British accent. Safety first. That was awesome. All right, so we've got two posts in the ground here already. Uh, here's one, the other one's back there. So I just filled in dirt and sand around here and uh, I used a, a sledgehammer and this piece of two by here to really pack the dirt down in. Um, so I just, you know, hold the two by four here, hit it with the sledgehammer to really pack this dirt around it. And it's not, of course, it's not as strong as concrete would be down there. It's, it's pretty sturdy though. There's not too much. You know, again, we're just building a chicken coop here. We're not building Taj Mahal. Um, just kind of stuck a rock down in here in this one. So I got two down and uh, four more to go. All right, we've got six posts in here. This one is shorter. I'll explain that in a minute. But for now, it's time to get some cross braces on the top of these guys. So what I'm gonna do is use these long pieces of pine over here and where, where they hit the top of these posts, uh, I'm just gonna put a little notch in. So to level this out, um, I'm gonna use this post right here as, my, as my, um, my guide. So I have a laser level, um, which I'm gonna use. Don't make fun of me for using a laser level. This might seem high tech for a chicken coop like this, but it's actually gonna be the easiest way to do it. So. I'm just going to get this laser level here and I purposely made all the rest of these high so I'll hit them with the laser and then I'll cut them off with the chainsaw uh, to make them all, all level. 
All right, we're just putting the finishing touches on the, the posts here for the run. There's Steve. He is securing this last cross piece right here. So we did some, uh, using the chainsaw, we did some smoothing out and uh, mitering so that we had, you know, something to bite into so it just wasn't just round piece of wood hitting round piece of wood. So there's that joint. There's this one right here. This one ain't going nowhere. Yeah, we're not going to win any uh, architectural digest awards, but... But they're not going to fall down. So, see we just got pieces of flat. We were able to uh, use the chainsaw to make these just flat humans right there. I'm going to step back so you can see the whole thing at this point. There we go. It's the next weekend and we're here in the garage building because it's raining outside and here is the floor of the coop framed out. I am using pressure treated wood only for the floor of this and that's because it's inherent to rot because it's going to be on the bottom exposed to the, uh, the dirt and the elements underneath. So that's why I'm using pressure treated 2x4s here. Um, the rest of the coop though is going to be built just using kiln dried 2x4s over there which are much cheaper than this, the, uh, the pressure treated stuff here. Now this main part of the coop here is exactly four feet by four feet. So four feet from this edge to the outside edge over here. Same with this guy right here. Outside edge to outside edge is four feet. Um, our our uh, joists here are just 16 on center, traditional. And then hanging off the back here, cantilevered is the uh, nesting box. So these two pieces right here, this one and this one are cantilevered out. And this is going to be our nesting box hanging off the back of the coop right here. So this is, how big is this? It's 18 inches off the back here. And this is um, something like 28 uh, inches across. So we're going to have two nesting boxes in here that are going to be just about the size of this rough frame right here. So now that we're framed out, it's time to put the floor down. Um, I'm just using 3 quarter inch CDX plywood here. Um, I'm only using three quarter here, and that's because this is uh, some scrap plywood that was given to me. Got some more pieces over there. So these definitely aren't four feet, so it's going to be kind of pieced together going on here, but free wood is free wood. Uh, I probably would have bought half inch or maybe even three eighths um, CDX for the floor if I was buying it, buying it new myself. And it is the next weekend, and we have our coop all roughly framed out. Here's Lulu. She is our quality control officer. So, um, all right, so I'll start back here. This is the nesting box. Um, it's gonna be divided in two. There's gonna be a, a plywood wall right here going down to divide that in two. And I was trying to decide between doing a, a roof that you could pick up to access the nesting box from the outside or a door. And I decided on the door here. So the roof is gonna be stationary. And this is gonna be our door right here. So this will sit right here and this will have hinges on the bottom and it'll open like this to be able to access the nesting box. Um, so here's one wall with the inside complete. So this is just Luon on the inside. It's this really thin eighth inch um, Luon stuff I can show you right here. You can see it's really thin stuff. Um, so that's really only there because the chickens will peck at the insulation on the inside if you don't have it covered. So that's the inside of that. And then back here we decided we are going to put insulation in. So we have three and a half inch uh, just regular fiberglass unfaced insulation that's going to be going in here next. We decided to put insulation in because we are in Vermont um, and it gets very cold here. There's plenty of um, plenty of nights below zero during the winter. So rather than having to put a, a heater out here to, to keep the chickens alive Figured might as well just insulate it so they can keep themselves warm. Right? Oh, and I wanted to show you this too. So this is a window that we found on the side of the road. And it's a little bigger than I was hoping, but, you know, it was free on the side of the road. It's just an old single pane glass window. Um, so we're using this as the window for the coop and also the door. So this is going to be attached on hinges over here. And... This will swing open like so. So this will give us access to be able to get into the coop, get a human being in here if we need to, but also to clean it out easily. 
So the idea is that um, this, I didn't put a, uh, a sill plate down here or a bottom plate on the wall because I wanted to be able to, to just scoop out all the, uh, the muck and bedding and stuff when it's time to change it, just scoop it all right out. The dark ones don't seem to... <gasps> Good job. Get right out of your hand, Lulu. That's on me. Our window door is now attached. See, I just got some simple three inch hinges here. Um, and I put some trim around the edge of it. So this guy now swings. I'm going to put a little latch on here later, just a little bolt latch. But as you can see, our door swings open now. Dun -dun. Uh, I've done a bunch of other work. Uh, as you can see, it's insulated now, so we just use standard fiberglass insulation. And there is Luon on the inside of the entire thing here, so you can see this Luon is really thin stuff. I'll put my finger in here for, for scale. It's really thin stuff, uh, but that's lining the entire inside of this. I use roofing nails because uh, they have a nice big fat head to hold this in here. So those are just your standard roofing nails holding them in. I cut two vents in here. One up here. That will be on the south side and then one on the opposite side on the north. And the idea was to get a good cross breeze going in here um, to keep the, the stale air moving moving out. Uh, here's the, the pop door is all in. So it's two pieces of, uh, of one by, which is the same stuff I'm using for my trim over here. It's two of them. Uh, there's a wider, the piece in the back is wider as you can see. And that is how, um, how I've got it going on a track here. So these are some, some uh, simple pine pieces here. You can see there's some space in the back for the back part of the, the pop door here. And I've left a little, um, a little track in the bottom so that it can set down in there. Bonk. It sets down in. So this is the funnest part for sure was, was building the pop door here. It was This was fun. Uh, so there's an eyelet right there in the top with a piece of rope. The rope goes up behind that piece of wood. I left some space there again. So um, And then it comes up. I kept this open so you could show you guys. So there's just a pulley attached to the back here. And then that rope goes through a hole through that stud, over through another hole drilled through that stud. It comes out over here onto an L bracket holding another pulley. So the idea is this is outside and we can open this pop door without having to go into the run or the coop or anything. So let's see if we can see in there. You can see the rope running through both holes down in there. And uh, the idea is you can just pull this rope let me focus. Just pull this rope and you can open the pop door. So I'm going to have, probably have a ring at the end of this string, at the end of the rope here, so that it's, uh, it'll hook onto a hook here. And then when you pull it down, there'll just be another hook there. And you can just hook the ring right on. Just wanted to show you this before uh, I put the roof on. I've got my, my rafters in place. These are just two by fours. I left about five inches overhanging um, on the back here, and then on the front, I have about eight inches overhanging. And when I when I put the roof on, I'm going to have about three inches overhanging here as well. Uh, so the Luon is this is on the inside, showing the inside. So this Luon is up here on the ceiling, and I'm just going to be putting insulation down, just laying it right in here. And then I'll be putting my metal sheathing roofing right over that. And I'm going to be putting a metal uh, roof on over the nesting box down here as well. Just wanted to show you this before uh, I put the roof on. I've got my, my rafters in place. These are just 2 by 4s I left about 5 inches overhanging um, on the back here. And then on the front, I have about 8 inches overhanging. And when I when I put the roof on, I'm going to have about three inches overhanging here as well. Uh, so the Luon is, this is on the inside, showing the inside. So this Luon is up here on the ceiling. And I'm just going to be putting insulation down, just laying it right in here. 
and then I'll be putting my metal sheathing roofing right over that and I'm gonna be putting a metal uh, roof on over the nesting box down here as well all right here she is emerged from the garage She's almost ready. She still needs some finish work. I haven't put the roof on yet because uh, we didn't want the added weight at this point. So, but it's moving day. The coop is out of the garage and we're going to be bringing it up to its, uh, its spot up there. Here we go. Now it's time to paint. Hi, Lulu. Hi. We're painting it yellow. Oh yes, awesome strokes. Yeah. Looking good. Here come the chicks coming into their new home. Stay in there, little guy. Stay in there, little guy. I'll be right by it. Some water. Some water. Good job. Is there a big enough amount to um drink the water? And we have chickens. Here's our six chickens. Uh, they're about three weeks old right now. We got them at two days old. Had them in the house for the first few weeks and then moved them out to the coop. Um, so they're all doing well. They're all, they're all seem very healthy. We have four Rhode Island Reds and two Aracanas, I think they're called. Um, we put some food right there to lure them out. So that's what they're eating right there. But this is the uh, the chicken walk here. I probably, when they're this young, they're slipping around all over the place on it. So I might put some more steps in here so they have an easier time. But uh, it just leads up here. Here's our, our uh, entrance mat. It goes into the coop. Um, we painted it yellow. Painted the whole thing yellow. We just wanted to match the house. Um, the roofing is just your standard corrugated steel metal. I had a couple pieces kicking around and they take these special screws right here that have a little washer, uh, waterproof washer built into them. So nothing special, just cut it to size. I made sure I had some overlap on it uh, just to get some extra protection around it. It's overlapping there and sticking out over here as well. Uh, so the wire around the run is this two by three steel stuff and they actually are still small enough that they were they were squirting right through the holes so if you look closely you can see around um, down here we have this black netting stuff that we just got at the hardware store it's it's made for like orchards or something to keep birds out so we have that going around the bottom here while they're young and they, they can squeeze through so we have this kind of heavier gauge steel stuff around the bottom course and then my next course which I haven't put on yet is going to be this chicken wire stuff um, this is going to be the door right here is going to go right in this space right here I just haven't built it yet so for now we just have this chicken wire going across it uh, this steel stuff is just held in with with standard roofing nails right there just kind of pound it in so you pound uh, the wire kind of into the, the wood here a little bit as well. Now, at the bottom, um, I dug a little trench all the way around with a pickaxe and sunk it down about two of these courses. It sunk down into the ground. Um, the idea being there that predators will have a lot more difficult time anyway trying to dig under it. Um, so yeah, that goes all the way around. What else can I show you? I can show you inside the coop here. Uh, we got lucky. Uh, some guy working at the hardware store actually gave us this water right here. So this is their water trough thingy. Um, and it actually plugs in. In the wintertime it plugs in to prevent it from freezing. So that's that. This is a little um, feeding trough we built in. As you can see they've been standing up here and shatting all over the place. Uh, there's the nesting boxes. One, two of those. They're of course not laying eggs yet, so we just kind of have bedding in there and they just kind of use it as more coop space. I put two roosting sticks in here. There's one right there and then one up top. 
Right now we have a heat lamp in here that we're using only at night. Uh, it's got one of those infrared red uh, heat lamp bulbs in it. So the um, extension cord goes down to the garage. So we plug it in at night and unplug it in the morning. And it's not too hot today. It's probably like 70 degrees. But when we came in here this morning, we had left the heat lamp on until about 11 a.m. And it was 97 degrees in here. So it was definitely too warm. So I think I'm going to devise some kind of way to open this window and, and have it screened so to have good ventilation in here in the summer but now that they're big enough to go outside during the day too I mean um, shouldn't be too big a deal well the Sun is setting on a beautiful spring day here so I, I could probably explain more about this but I'm gonna it's probably a long enough video as it is so I'm gonna call it quits um, I'll put as much info in the description of this video as I can about um, the pricing and everything of, of what I put into this. Uh, and if you guys have any comments for me about what I did wrong or right, because again, this is my first time, I was just winging it. So I'd appreciate any feedback from you guys. Uh, happy chicken raising.